Hi, Doug Bird from Doug Bird's Tackle World here in the Gold Coast. It is uh, Wednesday, the 31st of March, so a couple of days before Easter. Uh, I'm so going to tell you a little bit about whiting fishing because I'm guessing this weekend, with the weather being absolutely terrible, um, we've got probably 25 to 40 knot winds over the next four days, so the guys offshore won't be offshore fishing. So I'm guessing whiting is the in thing at the moment, and there's plenty around. Great fun to catch, great for the kids, and, uh, and great to eat as well. So I'm gonna to talk to you about rig, rig selection and, uh, and hook selection and what I prefer to use um, in my time whiting fishing and I've caught a few whiting in my time. So I have a few hooks I like to use and uh, I have four hooks in Pacific that I'm gonna show you tonight. Three of them I do like to use, or two of them in particular. Um, one I don't like to use and that one hook I don't like to use is a long shank hook, which is this fellow here. You know, it's a, these are very good hooks, don't get me wrong. Shinto brand is a great brand of hooks. They're Japanese steel, they're extremely sharp. Um, the problem is that they're a long shank and I'm particularly using worms when, I, when I'm whiting fish. I may use yabbies, use yabbies. Uh, but the problem with worms is they're, they're expensive to buy and they're, and they're hard to catch. And for every long shank versus every medium or short shank hook, um, I have to use nearly twice the amount of worm. And if you know how much they cost, you won't be doing that. So <laughs> downscale your hook size, okay? It's first important thing. Um, if you are using yabbies, learn to pull the yabbies up over the eye of the hook, okay? Which I'll show you. I don't have a yabby here, but you'll see in the worm, same, same style. If you are using long shank for yabbies, hey, they're great on big yabbies but they're no good on medium-sized yabbies or small yabbies because the yabby slides down the shank of the hook. And when the fish sees the baits on where my finger is, but that part is exposed, um, the silly whiting will bite it and the little whiting will bite it, but the big fellas or girls um, will not bite it nowhere near as much as a bait that's uh, covering up the whole hook. So that's why the, one of the reasons I don't like long shank and two is because they use too much bait up. Easy to get the fish out, the hook out of the fish's mouth. And that is one consolation for it, but there's not much else. So we'll get away from the uh, long shank style for a minute and we'll go to the uh, medium shank. Now in medium shank hooks, a couple of different types. Um, that's what we call like a thick style medium shank hook. Um, it's probably my second less favorite hook. The reason why I don't like it is if I'm using sort of six pound braid or line or lighter for whiting, um, the set that hook, you know, they're super sharp and they, again, the Japanese steels are very sharp. They just um, are a little bit hard to set in the fish's mouth. Although most whiting do tend to suck the bait in and it goes right down the backside. But uh, when you're trying to hook the fish, you just pull on the fish and trying to hook it, um, they're a little bit harder to set. So that's my second least favorite hook. So the long shanks out, and the heavy shanks out. The only time I'd ever use heavy shank hook is when I'm using maybe 15 pound leader and 15 pound line so I can actually drive that hook in. Um, but I'm never doing it for whiting so I don't use it much. Okay, now getting to my favorite hooks. I have a couple of favorite hooks. Um, one of them is this little fella here. It's a little number four. Oh, that's the number six actually, sorry. Six and four are both good uh, with the barbs down the side on the back here uh, for holding the bait on. Great hook, you don't use much bait. Hooks the fish up fantastic. A lot of them do get down the back side, but there's a trick to getting the hook out. And uh, it works very well. That's actually an instinct hook. And that fellow there, you know, size four. Okay, um, my other favorite hook I like to use is a true turn hook. A true turn hook in a size four again, if you can see that. Uh, it's a great little hook. They are thin, so they just go straight in. They don't miss and they also get, get in deep inside their belly as well. True turn hooks have a unique little feature, which is this little sort of kink uh, style shank. And the, the idea of it is when, when the fish is biting on it and when you pull on it, it twists the hook around into the fish. So that was straight, but when, when you apply pressure here and pull on it, it actually spins the hook around. So when it's biting on the, when the whiting's biting on the bait and you strike, the hook twists and hooks it. That's the uh, inception of that, of that type of thing. Uh, but a great hook, that's a true turn. Uh, they're in size four, which is that one there. Okay, so we'll quickly show you these a bit later on in still shots, you can see what they are. 
The leader size I like to use is about 10 pounds. Um, I don't like to use six or four or eight because when I'm getting a decent fish or trying to get my hook out uh, fairly quick, um, I get a lot of um, break offs on the line and a lot of cut fingers on the line just trying to pop that hook out. So it's, it's a bit um, annoying. And when I'm using sort of 10 pound and above, I can put a bit of pressure on it. And 10 pounds is that right size, get a good fluorocarbon that's quite thin um, and strong and uh, it works really well. Swivel size, I use about a size six swivel, which is a little crane, so a little black swivel. Now folks, um, the, for the most popular <laughs> type swivel that we sell, which is generally for the people who um, are new at it or, or don't know, haven't done much fishing yet and don't know the difference. Um, the brass swivel, which is the sort of goldy color ones, um, they're okay, but like really they're not the best swivel, okay? They don't spin as easy. So when you get a bit of current and, and maybe your bait's spinning in the current, they just stay still and your line twist up. And that's why you love a twisted mono line. Not too bad in the braid. Um, the crane swivels spin beautifully and, and they're a lot stronger. And they don't um, get um, like corrosion and, and snap on a big fish. So we do sell a lot of brass ones, but I for those of you I get a chance to talk to, uh, I highly recommend never to use them again. Okay, in all sizes. They're also a very big swivel for the poundage strength in comparison. So that little swivel there is uh, 20 kilos. So if that was a brass swivel, it'd be about five times that size. Okay, give you some idea. Um, okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is talk about the bait. Um, obviously live worms are, are the go for uh, catching um, whiting, they're the best bait, right? So live beach worms, uh, are not too bad. Live blood worms are probably number one, uh, which are the mud worms you dig out of the mangroves. Um, anywhere around sort of East Brisbane um, and like Pimpama, Cooma rivers, places that obviously aren't um, habitats, you're not allowed to fish uh, to dig in habitats. And you've got to dig by hand, you can't use a fork. Okay, they're the rules. Um, but um, I have always dug beach, uh, blood worms, sorry. And I obviously use beach worms too, but recently I've been finding beach worms obviously work nearly, and I'm not, this is no bull crap, <laughs> they work nearly as good as the, uh, as the beach worm, as the blood worm, sorry. So I'd say probably around 85 to 90% up the Narang River, I fish up the Narang River, particularly at night. And uh, yeah, I find them really good. When I can't get time to go get live worms or buy live worms, um, and we sell this product in our store, they're a, a preserved worm. They've been brined in, uh, secret herds and spices and um, and they work extremely good I'd have to say better than live yabbies and uh, and definitely at times up there with the uh, with the live baits live worms okay um, they're frozen but they're never frozen they're quite you can see they're quite soft even though that's frozen um, but they're extremely strong they've been str uh, put in like a cured in like a metho and it's quite, uh, it's very hard to break that, like, like very hard, so quite good. Okay, so I'm gonna use this size hook here, okay? This little red one here. So what I need to work out is how much worm I need to put on that hook. The idea is that you imagine a little tab of worm off the end of that shank there, so maybe three mil. And then I need to know the length of that hook there all the way up to the top, if it's folded out flat. So that little hook that's that long will probably become that long. And then I want a little bit, a little tab at the end here hanging out, out of the top here as well. So I need to add probably another five or six mil. So that hook bent out, probably gonna be 40 mil long, another 10, so 50 mil long, so five centimeters. So if I'm using that hook specifically, that's where I'm gonna cut most of my worms. I don't like to put it onto a cutting board and get a knife and cut it because it flattens the end out, the juices come out and you lose a little bit of the, the go, the, the flavor that the, the whiting like. So I use scissors, okay? And I just cut my worm at about that length. So it's probably around about five centimeters there. So I just cut it at that length, just like so, okay? No juice comes out, doesn't get flattened. It's ready to roll. Now, I'm gonna show this in slow-mo, or well not slow-mo, but in close-up a bit later on. You can watch it after I've finished here, but this is the important part is putting the worm on. So I'll do it from this angle here, but please watch later as I do it closer. Um, it's really important, live or dead, doesn't matter, 
that you leave at least that length there sticking out before you put the hook in. So don't drive the hook into the, the top part here. You drive it in down about five or six mil from the top like I talked about earlier. Just like so. Okay, the hook's in there and you can see that part there is exposed. Then I just thread it up the worm up the inside of the of the, uh, the worm pretty well. So don't go in and out, in and out, in and out. Use too much worm that way. Every turn is a bit longer, okay? <laughs> just go straight in the middle. And because uh, using a less amount of worm is the secret. When I get to the bottom here, I leave a little tab, just a little bit sticking out the bottom there, okay? Just like so. And I expose my hook right there. So that little piece there is, is flopping around. And then when I get to here, at the top here, I pull the worm up over my knot on my hook, actually. And that's like my little keeper. So if you can see that there, that you can't see like, bar the little tiny tip, you can't see any part of the hook, right? Now, if I had to use that long shank on that same amount of worm, it'd be sitting about there and that top part would be exposed. And when I get a little bit of current or I, I wind in a little bit, that worm be forced down the shank further and be all bunched up on the bottom here and that'll be exposed. And as I said, unless the fish is stupid, um, it won't bite on that, okay? So please don't use long shank hooks in most cases. The only time I, I don't use them at all, but the only time I would think about using them maybe would be if I was fishing a sandbank that had lots of flathead around. And the flathead obviously have that raspy piece inside their mouth and if I'm using a shorter shank hook and he swallows it down, there's a good chance on a little 10 pound leader that he's gonna shave it off pretty easy. If I've got a good, good flatty on. That hook might prevent a little bit of that, but I'd rather take the chances on catching more whiting uh, than catching the odd flathead with my whiting. So that's it. Uh, that is my that is my rig, my uh, my hook bait, sorry. And the other thing too is the length of the, uh, the leader. I don't know if you can see that, but that's around about 40 centimeters or 45 centimeters. That's as long as you need. You don't need those big long leaders that see, you see people using one meter or 1.2 meters. They're a pain in the backside. They get caught up on your, on your line all the time. They're very hard to cast out and, uh, and you can't get no accuracy in your casting. So keep it short and simple. Remember using a, using a running ball sinker above this here, above the swivel, between the rod tip and the swivel. So the fish can actually, it'll be sitting on the ground and the fish can pull the line through the, the uh, sink without feeling any resistance. Very important, that part. And that's probably about all you need to know about setting up for, for your whining fishing. It's just a matter now of going out, finding the areas and, uh, and doing it. But if you listen to our report every weekend, maybe Friday night, but tomorrow it'll be on tomorrow night because Easter's an extra long day, long weekend. Um, we'll do it earlier, but every Friday night we'll give you an update on where to catch the whiting around, around the Gold Coast here. But use the same technique in all of your fishing everywhere for whiting if you have access to whiting, whether it be south, uh, down South Australia or up at Cairns, it's the same scenario, okay? But you probably might use yabbies more than worms in some areas. Anyhow, uh, good luck out there and, uh, and please watch the end of this and you'll see um, how we do the worm up close. Thank you very much and Doug Bird from Doug Bird's Tackle World. Bye. Okay, so I've Cut a bit of worm, about the same, similar length to the shank. Fold it out, that is. And I'm gonna start, not at the top here, but I'm gonna start down a bit, because it's important that that top part wriggles in the current like it's alive. You still do the same thing to live worm too, by the way. Just thread it up the, up the shank. When you get right to the end here, just poke it out just before the end so that little last bit can wiggle as well. Then pull this part here up over the eye of the shank here like so, and that little part of the top there can still wriggle around, okay? And that's how it is, just like, like that. If you can see that, okay. Really important that you do your rig just like that. And uh, the fish just don't, um, they don't even care, they'll just slam it because it looks so natural. Thank you.